Joining me now is the lady who is running against Nancy Pelosi. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. She is our hero. She's Deanna Lorraine. Now, Deanna, I'm not going to ask you to list all the things that made you want to run against Nancy Pelosi because I only have a one-hour show, and Lord knows <laughs> that would take three or four days. But yes, what is the one thing, if there was a one thing, that just absolutely set you off and you're like, you know what, that's it. She's got to go down. God, that's such a tough question because you could literally have a book about how many things, you know. You, 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 this is a trick question, isn't it? <laughs> there's, it is. There's no, it absolutely it, is. It was probably here her spearheading the impeachment trial against President Trump. Um, that was one of the biggest things that angered me so much because she's so divisive and she's already dividing an already divided country even more uh, with her backwards, hope I can say this, but her priorities are just so freaking backwards. And then I'll just give you one more thing. The whole gender equality act that she was pushing last year was uh, something that really angered me too because it's, it's going to actually put women at a disadvantage in the future. And not only that, but it's, it's just, again, we're, we're focusing on the wrong priorities. We're focusing on you know what bathroom we should go in, what gender pronoun we should use, and whether we should impeach the president or not, who's done nothing wrong, instead of focusing on the real problems that real Americans are dealing with. And I'm so damn sick of it. And everything that comes out of her mouth, everything she does, how does your blood not boil? How do you just... How does anyone not feel like you want to fight against her? But how could you oppose the Gender Equality Act? You are very clearly a woman. Don't you want to be equal? <laughs> Look, first of all, we're already equal in God's eyes, first of all. And secondly, we are very different, and I like to keep it that way. You are a man, I'm a woman, and for many, many years, it's worked. And by the way, before feminists ruined it, women actually got special treatment. Women actually were more revered and respected, and that is a fabulous thing. Men bring their worth, women bring their worth, and feminists just want to ruin it all. Nancy Pelosi's at the head of that, too. I talked in the opening about uh, what's going on in New York City with the cops and the criminals and de Blasio and all that, and really, I, I, st I took a step back with it. And what bums me out, and you know this because it's where you're running, is some of our most beautiful cities. Like, I love New York City. People bag yeah, on San Francisco I, because there's a bunch of crazy people out there. San Francisco's a beautiful city with great food and great buildings. And, great, and I hate watching these cities rot under lefty leadership. It drives me crazy. Nancy Pelosi is the embodiment of cultural rot in America. And she is leading the charge on the rotting cities left and right. I mean, San Francisco, of course, used to be a beautiful city and there's so many beautiful parts to it, but let's be honest, homelessness has increased 17% just in the last year. The trash, feces, I mean, there's a feces map that tells you where the human feces are on the streets. I mean, I'm pretty sure grandparents wouldn't have even thought that would be possible 30, 40 years ago. And she's leading the charge on this. It's all gotten worse under her watch and under Democrat policies. When are people going to wake up and learn, hello, Democrat policies lead to a, a country. Again, hopefully I can say that. But Democrat policies don't work. They lead to socialism. They lead to lawlessness and crime, homelessness, and a lack of unity in our country. We've got to get our country back, and it starts district by district. Even if it's a tough blue district, you guys, we have to run, throw ourselves in the fire, and miracles can happen. Because even if it seems like a David and Goliath mission, like myself and Ms. Pelosi, you know, greater things can happen and we just have to stick together. We cannot wave the white flag of surrender or else we're not going to do anything. We're not going to accomplish anything. Yeah, we all know how David and Goliath turned out, by the way. By the way, I have to ask. People think they have this they have this complete misconception about places like San Francisco or California in general or New York, and they think to themselves, well, they're all Democrats. So it's all blue. I try to explain to them, just because I've been everywhere, that's not necessarily the case. And in fact, a lot of these places, they have some of the most right-wing, furthest conservative people you can imagine because they're so beaten down and angry at this point in time. Yeah, I think they're coming out of the woodwork, actually. There's a lot more of them in hiding especially when Nancy did her little antics like last week, ripping up the Consta, ripping up the State of the Union speech, excuse me. Oh, well, she might as well be ripping up the Constitution too. She does that every day. But yeah, when she does those things, people are coming further and further to the right. They're just so tired of it. Those things just make them so fed up and they say, look, why are we still doing this? And the thing that I did last week with yeah. the plane, that was a little bit of a, a test drive to see 
how many people are really around here that share my values and are also fed up with it? Yeah. So it was kind of my little test drive to see uh, who's going to be coming out of the conservative closet there. You had to know I was going to ask about the plane. Who came up <laughs> with the idea for that? We played it on the show last week before I even knew you were having me, before I even knew we were having you on, and I laughed oh, hysterically. Wow. It was, we dedicated a whole block to it. I think that's just the I best thing it. in the world. Is that your idea? That was my idea. Okay. It was my idea. All right. And now, it everybody was, thinks the know, country it, is hopelessly divided. Right. Are we so divided that there's nothing we can work with Democrats on? Let's say you pull off a miracle and you bounce San Fran Nan out of there. If yeah. you can do that, is there anything that you can look across the aisle with Democrats, even if it's a tiny, tiny issue, and say, hey, let's work together on this and help the American people out? Absolutely. And that's the thing. I think a lot of our issues are actually bipartisan issues that we all can get behind. I think things like crime, right, lowering crime, uh, reducing the homelessness and coming coming up with a bipartisan solution for that. Um, criminal justice reform, right? That's something I think is a bipartisan issue. The opioid crisis, which is ripping through families and ripping apart families from children, from their parents. That's something that we should both be able to get behind. You know, the high prices of prescription drugs, uh, medical marijuana, right? Potentially legalizing marijuana. There's so many issues that I think we can get behind. One of the most important things, though, I believe, is that it's not spoken of at all, is restoring and strengthening the American family unit. It is so broken right now. There's so many fatherless homes. There's an epidemic of fatherless homes. And the broken family unit is the cause, the root cause, of literally every single societal problem that we're facing right now, to from mass shooters to homelessness, the rate of incarceration, crime, mental health, drug addiction, right? There's so many issues, rape, sexual harassment. You know, the left and feminists say, you know, me too, we have to reduce sexual harassment and rape. Absolutely, but we need to, to, to actually have an honest conversation about the state of the American family unit right now and how to put policies and practices in place at the policy level and at a cultural level to strengthen the family unit so we have less fatherless homes less broken families and less rape, less sexual harassment, less homeless and all these other things. But we're not talking about it. We have not had an honest national discussion about the state of the American family unit. And it's time that we have that. That is something that I'm championing. It's part of my platform. And it's something I would absolutely make uh, at the forefront of the conversations if elected into Congress. Deanna, thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck to you out there. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it.